Hi, I'm Dr. Sara Nick Rivon. I'm a cardiothoracic anesthesiologist and an intensivist, and I'm giving you a five-part series on lung ultrasound. In this segment, we're going to be discussing interstitial syndrome, and I'm going to go on to explain exactly what this is and in what pathologies you may find interstitial syndrome. So there are different causes of interstitial syndrome, pulmonary edema, interstitial pneumonia or pneumonitis, diffuse parenchymal lung disease, such as patients with pulmonary fibrosis or acute respiratory distress syndrome or ARDS. And interstitial syndrome, when evaluated with lung ultrasound, um, is a syndrome that will allow for the visualization of artifacts. These artifacts predominantly are described as beelines, and there are these comet tails or rockets that are laser-like vertical hyperechoic reverberation artifacts that start from the pleural line and extend all the way down to the bottom of your imaging, obliterating those A-lines that we talked about on normal lung uh, visualization. They tend to move with the lung as it slides, and they really look like flashlights or lasers of light coming from the pleural line. Multiple beelines, so greater than two per field in multiple fields, is known to be pathologic. And this is something that you find in patients with interstitial syndrome. So then the question becomes, well, how do you differentiate certain patterns of beelines from others, so as to delineate pulmonary edema from ARDS or lung consolidation, pneumonias. There have been a number of studies looking at beelines and how they correlate to extravascular lung water to help delineate uh, pulmonary edema with lung ultrasound. And what we found is that as patients who uh, receive dialysis, complete their dialysis run or receive their diuretics, the amount or severity of beelines that were seen in their pre-dialysis or pre-diuretic uh, time period tend to disappear as water is removed. And these are two different studies that were done looking at the removal of extravascular lung water with the use of dialysis and how that changed uh, the visualization or the presence of beelines. This is an example of what beelines look like in a patient with pulmonary edema. They're diffuse, uh, they're usually bilateral, and uh, across uh, the entire field, there's no real sparing of, of areas within the lung where you're seeing beelines versus not seeing beelines and um, they take up the majority of the image coming from the pleural line and obliterating A-lines going to the bottom of the screen like these laser darts or these flashlights, uh, comet tails, rockets, however you'd like to describe them. Now, B-lines and parenchymal lung disease are a little bit different, and we have some studies evaluating uh, patients with parenchymal lung disease and comparing chest CT radiography to ultrasound to understand what the pattern of beelines are in this patient population. And there are a couple of different associated signs besides just having beelines that are um, in a less homogeneous distribution. You can also get pleural line abnormalities, which we'll show you examples of some subpleural abnormalities, and once again, that non-homogeneous distribution that I just mentioned. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. Um, here you have an example on the right side of the screen at the top of where subpleural consolidations are seen below the pleura. And this is oftentimes a finding that you'll see in patients who have um, acute respiratory distress syndrome. This is what's highlighted in this article, and these are images from that article in patients with ARDS. So as mentioned, you see the subpleural consolidations at the top of the screen there, delineated by the arrow markers. There's also a reduction of lung sliding, which of course is more difficult to show in a still image, but we had talked about this 
on our, in our pneumothorax lecture where patients who have absent lung sliding may not necessarily have a pneumothorax but may have other pathologies. ARDS was in that list of pathologies for patients where you might have absent lung sliding and not a pneumothorax. You see these spared areas uh, of normal parenchyma in the second image, areas where there are no B lines and the, the area within that lung is basically spared because it's normal parenchyma and you don't have this abnormal interface between fluid and water that would produce that B line. And then you also get this non-homogeneous distribution from the spared areas of parenchyma within the lungs. And these pleural line abnormalities, which are seen at the bottom on that last ultrasound image set where you see the pleural line looks almost jagged or sawtooth in a, in a way. And you see how that looks in comparison with a normal pleural line um, uh, depicted by the B image at the bottom. Now, we have some uh, very, very nice images that were published in this article um, done in February of 2006. Uh, looking at bedside lung ultrasound in the assessment of alveolar interstitial syndrome. And this was a patient who had pulmonary edema, and you see the chest x-ray at the bottom of the screen and kind of how homogenous these B lines look in each of the lung fields, like flashes of light that start from the pleural line obliterate A lines and go to the bottom of the screen, how there's more than two in each lung field. This is very classic of a patient with pulmonary edema. Compare that now to these images where you have CT scan findings of a patient with diffuse interstitial pneumonia and how that B line distribution is not homogeneous. Uh, there are areas of spared lung here and you can see there are some subpleural um, consolidations and pleural line abnormalities. And now let's compare that once again to a patient with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, how the CT scan looks, and compare that with the ultrasound images where you see very clear subpleural consolidations and pleural line abnormalities with non-homogeneous distributions of B lines and areas of spared lung, and actually can even see areas of pulmonary consolidation here, which we have not yet covered, but we'll cover in another talk. So this will conclude our discussion of interstitial syndrome and the different findings that you can see with lung ultrasound. I hope you'll join me in another segment where we will discuss some of the other pathologies that you might find on evaluation with lung ultrasound.